about to. Are you looking at? What the fuck happened to me? Guys, how did I glow down? How does that happen? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Glow down? Instead of. It's alright. It's alright. Guys, I got a text! My motivation says be with someone who knows exactly what they have when they have you. True. That ain't a lot. My biggest pet peeve is when people breathe on me. I freaking <laughs> hate it. I hate it. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. Amira here. Um, so for today's video, I'm going to be filming um answering questions or assumptions that people have about me basically i did a poll on my instagram and i asked um people to leave me some questions that i should answer any assumptions they had about me so we're just going to combine the questions that uh, my followers on instagram have asked me some of the people who ask me questions don't actually follow me but follow me by the way on my instagram all relevant information will be here. Um, so yeah. So let's just head on into the video. Someone said, please do your makeup routine. Shout out to that special someone, you know who you are. I definitely will do a makeup routine. I actually want to film for one of my next videos. By no means am I an MUA or anything. Like, I don't want people to get it twisted, but I do want to improve my makeup skills and I think Practice is the best way. Practice makes perfect. So if I just keep practicing and making videos out of my practice, I'm sure they're gonna do better. Plan on filming maybe like um, a Valentine's Day look or I don't know, my everyday makeup look, I guess. So yeah, maybe I'll film my everyday makeup look sometime. And yeah, okay. Someone says, how do you get such a fat ass? Well, honestly, it's just the food that I've been eating. Since I've been in Ghana, I've gained quite a lot of weight. And um, it's literally just been all the food in Ghana. So you need to come to Ghana, get your ass fat, basically. <laughs> but otherwise, I would say go to the gym, you know, do weight training and all that stuff. Squats. Someone said, who is a photographer that I'd like to work with? This is a really good question. Okay. So I would like to work with Danny Wonders. Um, actually, my third video on my YouTube channel is a day in the life slash vlog of me going to his art exhibition that he posted in um, Accra. And I really love his art. I love his like pictures that he takes. So I would really like to shoot with him one day. I'd also like to shoot with Kofi Motivation. I've seen his work also. I think, I'm pretty sure he's a Ghanaian um, photographer. Um, obviously, Steven Mizell, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> future things, inshallah. And yeah. I'd like to work with a lot of photographers, actually. But, inshallah, in due time. When I'm due to return back to the UK, um, I'll collab with more photographers there. It's just because I'm quite busy right now, so I haven't been doing a lot of collabs. But there are quite a few photographers in Ghana that are really good as well, so... You guys should definitely check them out. Um, someone said, favorite photographer you've worked with? So, I'd have to say... This might sound biased, but it's definitely Luna, my sister. She is a fashion design student and also a photographer. And whenever me and her work together, it literally like the pictures come out amazing. If I do say so myself, humbly speaking. Like I just love, essentially if you have like a really good relationship with the photographer, it's easier to bounce off ideas, to take direction. And also it's just like, Obviously, because she's my sister, we do share 
a lot of similar interests and um, likes in fashion and photography and all of that stuff. So we tend to shoot stuff that we both like. So I'd have to say Muna, um, her photography page, I'll link it right here. I also would say, um, I am visual art. That's his at name, I'll also tag it here. I've worked with him when I was in the UK. I did one shoot with him and I'm actually still, he's actually asked me a question, let me find it. But yes, yeah, so I worked with him when I was in England and we did one shoot together and I was absolutely obsessed with the photos that came out and how they looked and just his editing style and everything. So I'm really looking forward to working with him again. That actually brings me to my next question, which is a question from him. His name is Luke, by the way. <laughs> I just said his fucking like at name as if people only exist on Instagram. Uh, right, so if you guys want to check him out, I'll leave his stuff in the description below. I'll also leave it on the screen so you can check his stuff out. But yeah, so bringing me to my next question, he asks, when are we shooting again? We're definitely gonna shoot again when I'm back in the UK. I have so many ideas and concepts and I cannot wait to get started and get working. Someone said, tell me about your city. Well, this is hard because when this question comes to mind, the first place that I would think to describe would be Johannesburg because like I mentioned in my um, get to know me tag, I lived in Joburg for like six or seven years of my life. And so to me, that's home. I'm from Ghana, like I said, in my get to know me tag, but this is actually the first time I'm living in Ghana, apart from when I was really small because I couldn't really remember that. So technically speaking, this is the first time I'm actually fully living in Ghana. And yeah, so I forgot why I was saying that. So if we were to speak about Johannesburg, I would say Johannesburg is a very culturally diverse place it's also just a great place to have fun honestly i love i love living in Joburg. basically i observed that the youth of south africa have a real passion for creativity and there's just a lot of creatives there and it's really easy to network and you know make art just make creative stuff or to just be a creative so i really love love it there it's also a great like party town city if you will and guys i got a text my motivation says be with someone who knows exactly what they have when they have you true that ain't a lie but, and if we're talking about accra the city that i'm living in now Something about my city is that food is absolutely amazing. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Like, I'm just gonna say for those who missed, um, you know, the year of return 2019, you should definitely hit up Ghana 2020 for Afro Nation and Afro Chella. And just to, you know, experience an African country, if you've never been to an African country before, I'd recommend and suggest coming to West Africa, Ghana. You'll enjoy it, trust me, amazing. I'd say the food is something really interesting. And two, we love eggs. Like I know, <laughs> I know this is gonna be like, all my fellow Ghanaians are gonna be like, bitch, really? Really, nigga? You're like fucking egging. <laughs> Pani, you're egging on this whole egg stereotype, but we really do like eggs. Like we love it. And it's a snack for us, like it's a, um, it's a street food, like literally walking on any street, you'll see one of those ladies selling egg. I'll show you guys a picture somewhere on the screen. And then we just have it with pepper, it's really good. So it's actually egg and pepe, but you know, pepper, pepe, same thing. <laughs> well, someone said, what motivates you the most? Um. Honestly speaking, I would have to say my dreams motivate me and the life that I want to live motivates me in the sense that um, having taken my year out in Ghana, 
this year, I had a lot of time to think about what I want in life, who I want to become, the type of person I want to be, all of that. And so, um, obviously I had time to really plan out my dreams, the steps that I, I would take to get to those dreams. And it's helped really motivate me because I know exactly what the goal is and what steps to take. And so, essentially, it's like dangling a carrot at the end of the race line or whatever you call it with your prize and you, and because i know what the prize is and i know exactly what the payoff is for working hard to ensure that i'm able to live the life that i want to it motivates me to do better and to get to that spot where i'm able to say i worked hard for this and i deserve what i have i hope that made sense someone said are you in sa right now Sadly, I am not. I wish I was in SA right now. You know, guys, you don't understand how much I miss Josie. Like, it's actually deep. It's deep. I miss Josie. I want to go home. Inshallah, I'm going to go soon. I really want to go soon. I'm trying to go to Cape Town. New actually, no. New Year's Cape Town's not going to work because <laughs> affirmation. <laughs> Got it in December? Guys, lit. If you haven't already invested in your tickets, do so now. Someone said, when is our shoot? <laughs> our shoot will be as soon as I'm back in London. And hopefully you won't return back to Sweden by then. Someone said, what is the best gift you have been given? Ooh. Mm. Mm. The gift of life. I know it's very cheesy, tacky, whatever. But honestly, yeah, there's like, in this life, another thing that I've learned, like, just being on my gap year, you know, learning more about myself is just something I'm trying to focus on this year is being more uh, grateful for what I have and complaining less and just accepting the good that comes to me. And so obviously with that, the gift of life, the fact that I'm able to make this video, the fact that I'm here right now is more than enough for me. So thanks parents. Thanks for that one. <laughs> yeah. Someone said to the assumption, you are very stuck up. Um, I actually get this a lot, or not specifically that I'm stuck up, but a lot of people always tell me that they think that I'm really, like they thought I was mean before they approached me and it's literally because I have a rest, resting bitch face, like it's actually really bad and I realized that I get my resting bitch face both from my mom and my dad so obviously tenfold, it's just, it's really bad, like This is how I would look like on a normal day, if you just saw me like on my phone And I don't understand why it doesn't look inviting. I mean, yeah, granted, I don't look inviting, but yeah, I'm not stuck up at all. I'm actually very like approachable, very and down to earth. It's just I have a resting bitch face. <laughs> Someone said you don't like your course. That's a funny one. That's a funny one. So for those of you who don't know, I'm a law student actually. Um, currently taking a year out slash gap year if you will so that's what i'm doing right now and that's why i'm in ghana hence explains my living here for the first time but um yeah i love my course uh i was fortunate enough to have parents that never really forced me to do what they wanted me to do and always allowed me and my sisters to pick what we truly wanted to do and what our passion was and so i never really had those issues when it came to my parents and ultimately I chose what I wanted to do and what I wanted to study. Overall, I love my course to be honest. I have such a passion for law. I have a passion for justice overall really and I just, I love learning new things. I love being able to offer people solutions and I feel like the law is really like an amalgamation of all those things where I 
you learn a lot of new information on a daily basis and then with that information that you learn you're able to help other people in the process and I think that's an amazing job so yeah but overall I would say that I love my course I would say though honestly speaking I sort of got towards the end of my second year of uni um, I started to like lose the passion and the fire that I had for my course just because it was I mean it was due to a lot of external factors but mostly I would say like just not being in the right mental headspace and everything and then also just the workload and then missing be, like being homesick all together I was just starting to lose the passion and Again, like I said, my gap years really helped me learn a lot about myself, but also think a lot about my future, like I mentioned earlier. And so it gave me time to really assess what I want to do in law specifically, and how I'm going to get there. And I was able to rekindle the passion that I have for law. So honestly, win-win. Someone said, you don't have a lot of friends. Um. I think that's relatively true. I don't really have that many friends. Um, I'm one of those people that my, like my high school friends are truly like my family. So, I mean, apart from my high school friends and some of the friends that I made in university. And, oh, okay, now it's sounds like I have a lot of friends. <laughs> of course, like my childhood friends. But then again, like I'm, I'm listing all these different like periods in my life and all these friends but that's not to say like I had loads of childhood friends and loads of high school friends but I keep my circle tight and those who know know and yeah I think it's better to have less like quality over quantity obviously and I would say the quality like the quality of my friendships are amazing it's literally like family that I've chosen myself so I love that. And I love my friends. And to all of you friends watching right now, I love you. Thank you guys so much. Someone said that you're a bitch. <laughs> Again, I feel like this ties into that whole like, um, I'm stuck up narrative. I don't really, I wouldn't say that I'm a bitch. Again, I would say that I'm a really like nice person and easygoing. Honestly, the best word to describe me as a person is chill. Unless you provoke me, then I could be a bitch. But granted, that's like anyone, like, if you try me, be ready to be tried. How many languages can I speak? Um, okay, technically, like, actually properly speak, I can speak English. I can speak Hausa. And I would say, like, for, like, fluent, okay, I'm not fluent. <laughs> Okay, I kind of am though. I don't know why I'm doubting myself. I'm fluent, it's just that like my vernacular is not that good. But I speak Hausa and I speak English. I used to be able to speak French really well, but I moved out of a Francophone country and I lived there for seven years. And so when I moved, I wasn't really, I didn't really have to speak French apart from in school. And so it just sort of got worse and worse and worse. And now my French is kind of gone. <laughs> after like eight years <laughs> of living in a francophone country it's really bad and then arabic but that one dear guys i know arabic from memory it's not from like i couldn't have like if someone was trying to speak with me speak to me in a conversation if someone was trying to speak if someone was trying to have a conversation with me like at the market or something no Sorry, I can't understand. But like, I'll recite any surah you want me to, you know? Like, so in that sense, I only know memorized Arabic, like stuff from the Quran or st like, you know, duas or this or that, but I don't actually like speak Arabic, like, you know? Yeah? Yeah, I was gonna try and add another. <laughs> Wow, Spanish Avenitio, bitch. I did Spanish Avenitio, and so technically I speak Spanish. Como se dice, I'm fluent, because I am. <laughs> but yeah, um, 
barely speak Spanish, but that Spanish I've been show really drained the life out of me. So I have to tell people that at least I speak a bit. Un pequito, un pequito, un just, you know. My biggest pet peeve is when people breathe on me. I freaking <laughs> hate, <laughs> I hate it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also make sure to leave any suggestions for videos that you have in the comment section below. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Bye guys. Right. Radio. Again. I'm fucking dead. Same motion. Nothing new. Nothing changed. <laughs> I love that movie.